Hi, this is a lecture taken from my online course about the Apache Spark certification, which is offered by Databricks. It handles one of the topics that you need to understand in order to get certified. So check it out. In this lecture, we are going to see how to use aggregation function over an entire data frame instead of specifying groups using the group by function or the group by transformation. Let's see how to do that. Using our web sales data frame, we would like to know what is the max sales price of a given item. For that, we can do web sales data frame. And then we select, for example, the max web sales table sales. Now the price. And execute that. It returns a data frame that we can then apply shows on it. Now this return a data frame with one column and this is the max sales price available inside the web sales data frame. Remember one thing I said earlier is that before going into the exam, you must know if a function like this takes a string as argument or it takes a column object. In the case of the max function, if we pass in a column object, let's see what will happen. It also works. However, if you take the customer data frame, for example, and we say select the year path of the birth date dot show. This does not work. Although here this is a an SQL function, this is also a SQL function. These are some small tricks you have to be aware of before attending the exam. And if you are not sure, Go to the documentation and look what is necessary. Here we have to specify a column object and then it will work. Let's say customer DF. Of course, earlier it was wrong. Anyhow, you can see that even after I wrote the correct data frame name there, it says it requires a string, but uh, a column, but it found a string. That's why. This is an error. However, a function like max will take a string and a column object. We can also do the same thing with the minimum sales price. And we can see that the minimum sales price was zero. And this is how we can, we can use max and min to get the minimum values inside a given column. Of course, instead of selecting everything one by one, we can apply a method called AGG like this, AGG. Now we can specify it, everything we like. We can say, give us the max value of the web sales. Price, for example, Let me put dot show it down here. We can also say give us the minimum value of the same thing. Or we can ask for the average value. Apache Spark provides two operation to get the average value. There's also a function called mean that returns exactly the same value as AVG, for example. Or we can also just specify it, count how many items we even have. Then execute that. Missing a semicolon. Yes, I'm missing a semicolon.
Now it will return a nice data frame where you will see some nice statistic over the data frame that you are using. This is quite interesting if you are doing some exploratory work on a data set, you would like to know what are the statistics on some given columns. So let's take a look into the documentation of the EGG function itself. And you can see here it states that it can aggregate on an entire data set without building groups. That means we do not we do not have to use the group by key and everything. Although this also it's just a shorthand of group by and then applying the AGG function on a couple of columns that you can then specify. Now let's take a closer look into the count aggregation itself. It is a quite interesting one because it is also available on the data frame as a transformation but also as a SQL function. So if you take the web sales data frame and we say count, this will return the number of records inside the web sales data frame. However, if you do something like web sales, let me just copy that so that I don't have to type it every time, dot count, and then we specified star. Apache Spark will count also null values. That means it will also count rows containing null values in all the columns. And this should return the same thing as web sales dot count itself. There we go. Error argument. Well, there we go. Must select and then use the SQL function count. This is a transformation available on the data frame object itself and this is the SQL function that we can call. Do that. Now let's say show. And this returns exactly the same value as previously. However, this also contains null value. Now if you go ahead, copy this, put it there, and then specify the name of a given column. We can say sales price. Now Apache Spark will only count the rows where there is a value inside the sales price column. And now you can see that we have a number that is different than the previous one. And we can see that the number returned by count and a column name is less than the number we get when we just specified count star. You can see that here we try to build statistic of our data frame using the individual function directly. However, there's a better way to get this, this statistic and that is if you use the describe function available on the data frame. So let's go ahead, take the customer data frame, for example, and then just call described on it and execute it. As you can see, describe returns a data frame with a column that contains a couple of, of value that you might need, like the count, the mean value, the standard deviation, the minimum and the maximum value available in a data frame. Of course, we can also get all those data by calling the individual function like here. However, if you are just interested in an in, in exploratory analysis of your data, this is a very nice way to do it. If you are only interested in the statistic of a given column, you can also specify the name of the column that we like to look further into. For example, in this case, using the web sales data frame. You can go ahead and say, give us the statistic of the web sales sales price, for example.
and this will then go ahead and return the number of sales price available in the data frame what is the average value the standard deviation what's the minimum and the maximum we can also use another function called summary on a data frame to get even more statistic information let me show how this one works we'll go down here for example and then i can then say let's use the web series data frame because it contains a couple of more columns then we can call summary on it and execute it And here we can see the result of the summary operation. It contains all the information that the described operation also contains, but it also adds something like this, where you can see where your value is located on a scale from one to zero to 100, for example. It also has the max, the minimum value, the standard deviation and all the like. Instead of, instead of computing all the statistic you can also just specify it with the one that you are interested in for example we can go ahead and say we just want to know what is the standard deviation of all the columns in that case we can do stdiv def and execute that and this will only compute this statistic for all the columns available in the data frame and now you can see how this looks like now this time the summary column only have one value and we have the standard deviation of all the columns available inside the web series data frame. If you enjoyed this video, I think you will also like the entire course. The course covers all the topics you need to pass the exam, such as understanding the basic of the Apache Spark architecture, how to manipulate columns in a data frame, how to filter columns or rows from a data frame. It also covers how to work with user defined function and Spark SQL functions. The course contains over four and a half hours of video, and you will also get a Databricks notebook that you can import directly into a Databricks workspace to easily follow all the instruction and all the code exercise. It also contains more than 40 quizzes that will help you prepare for the exam. So use the link in the description below to join the course and get certified. Thank you.